forward with much faith and look forward to the belief with our author and special guest at the table. I would request you, wherever you happen to be, to kindly join us down here for the launch of the title Believe. At the very onset, a warm welcome to one and all. Crossword aims to be a point of social and cultural interaction, a place where authors and poets hold court and children are regaled and people just like all of us gravitate to be informed, entertained and enlightened like in the film world. A highly acclaimed director himself. Thank you very much, Mr. Benekal, for joining us here at the table. And I'm going to share with you, most of you, and friends and family and all you folks and avid readers, I'm going to request you to kindly warm your palms and let's give a very special applaud and give a congratulations to Varun. And a big thank you to Lead Start, the publishers, for making the book release possible as well as the book for us itself. Congratulations, Lead Start. Congratulations, Varun. And you're presenting Bali. Yeah. And as we extend our congratulations to you, Varun, the same goes to your parents down here, the Guarani family. Thank you very much. All the very best. Proud moment for the parents also down here in the front. All the very best. Hello. In case you haven't guessed by now, my name is Varun Guarani. Yes, I just wanted an excuse to point at the poster. <laughs> Today, I want to start with um, a quote that many people throw around. But I don't think that they know what that quote means because it's only right here, standing amongst all these books and among all my friends, that I realize what it means. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. And I'd like to say that today certainly feels like that day. And so on the first day of the rest of my life, I'd like my first words to be words of gratitude. I'd like to thank Mr. Sham Benegal for his time. I'd like to thank my friends, my family. I'd like to thank Lead Start Publishing. I'd like to thank Crosswords for hosting this event. But above all, I'd like to thank my parents for putting up with me most of the time. I mean, they're probably hearing me speak more on the stage now than they have in the last two months. So, thank you. Reaction to him as a person. Samantha seemed to be gaining confidence. She said in an angry tone, I'm upset because you're one of the people responsible for spreading hopelessness and sadness in the world. Your books actually try to convince people that there's no hope left. You tell people to stop believing in their loved ones and everyone around them. Your works are so depressing they've actually driven people to suicide. You're a killer. Connell Blinken said, that isn't true. Sophie became, Samantha became furious. Yeah, I bet that helps you sleep at night while others are going around, going without sleep, wondering how they can survive in a world you made them believe in. She pointed to the door angrily and said, Get out of my house. Connor quietly moved away. As he was dressing, Samantha said, And I didn't misread you. You're just an egoistic man who thinks he's better than others, so you want to put down others so that you can feel superior. Connor finished dressing and exited the apartment. As the door slammed behind him, he put his head in his hands and said, thought, if only it were that simple. Now I'd like to say this about Believe. It isn't a simple book. It's a book with characters with complex motivations, desires, fears, hopes, dreams. And it's a book which is a lot about change. It's about fighting demons, both inner as well as the demons which are real, the ones in human form. And at the epicenter of that change is the unlikeliest man of them all, Connor White, a man who is long given in to cynicism, a man who is long given in to pessimism, but he is not a cynic. 
and now he has come to a point where his wife has died and he can't write anymore because he realizes that he's writing. The one thing in his life that has brought him solace all throughout has caused someone to commit suicide. And then after that he finds out that his wife didn't, think, didn't want him to be this person. His wife wanted him to be better. His wife wanted him to be more. And so Connor White decides for the first time in his life to break the cycle. He decides for the first time that he is going to fight against cynicism. He's going to fight against pessimism. And he's going to be the change. And it isn't an easy transaction. It isn't an overnight process. But it's possible. And because he believed it was possible, it made all the difference. And now we talk, and so where does Connor go? He goes to a town called Levian with its own history, its own culture, and its own religion. And so for the first time, Connor has to save people. He has to believe in himself so that others can believe in him. And just because this book is about I, I was absolutely charmed by young Varun when he stood up to say that when I was young. <laughs> you know, how much younger young man. <laughs> I think it is a, it's, it's very charming that you should imagine that you were young at one time, but I think you're young now and you'll continue to remain young for a very long time. What is fascinating to me is the fact that you have written a very accomplished book at such a young age. And it's marvelous to see that because for me it represents the birth of a new writer. Because, uh, you know, it's not often that you get to see anybody writing a novel at the age of 18, it's quite extraordinary. And just the idea that you have written so many words and created a narrative, you created a whole story that has many dimensions to it, not simply the dimension of telling a story, which you are telling anyway, but the fact that it has the interiority of a person, it has the exterior world, it has ideas, it has frustrations, worries, fear, all the elements that go to make a person's life. I think that is what is absolutely fascinating about the book. And I would like actually for you to, for everybody here, to buy this book and read it because it's a uh, it's a work of a young author who you will hear a great deal more of as the years go by. And that is, that is, that is a very important aspect of it all. And what, is, what delights me more than anything else is that we live in the same building. <laughs> and you know, so I didn't know because you know, here was this young man writing away and none of us knew that he was busy creating a masterpiece. So but it's a it's a charming book. It's written extremely well and I look forward to reading his other books as they keep coming. But I I, I can't help uh, being an elder and telling him that you know his next book should be much closer to himself. It should be something that uh, you know, this is an experience which is fascinating, but it's too much of an objective experience. You know, I think what you should be doing also is to write something that is close to you, something that relates to you in, in an everyday way. And uh, I think you will achieve that because you have the talent, you have the ability, and you have the language. That is at your command. So I think uh, you will achieve that, and I 
you know, wish you the very best in your future. And I think uh, you will make it. I look forward to your second book, my third book, and the fourth book, and so on and so forth. In the meanwhile, what I would like to do 